Okay, welcome everybody. This is uh, an interesting story. We're going to look at hibernation and science fiction. My name is uh, Professor Matteo Cherry. I'm a professor of physiology at the University of Bologna. And I'm part of a research group for the European Space Agency who's tried to develop a technology for inducing uh, astronauts into a deep sleep, into an hypersleep for uh, space exploration. So today we're going to look at movie, classic movie, they're using this uh, technology for sustain the storyline and see how good they've done it, if that's realistic or if it's just pure invention. So there is liquid inside. That's very good. That's very good because that's highly probable, I would say. If I can envision a, a, a real capsule for a, a, astronauts in suspended animation, there, there should be a liquid inside for, for several reasons. Uh, and we can discuss what liquid is that. There could be some special liquid. There are liquid that are, uh, carry, they can carry an incredible amount of oxygen inside. They can actually be breathed. You, you can breathe those liquid and, and, and that's one way you can cool down the body very fast. It's called liquid ventilation. Um, I think that's not the case for this movie. The liquid wasn't used for liquid ventilation. Um, it seems like it could serve a different purpose. Um, the sh uh, shielding, like kind of shielding against radiation in space. So in space, radiation are, are like number one enemy, and the moment is a problem that has not been solved, and we don't really know how to shield crew member, a space crew member from radiation. Uh, but we know what a perfect shield is. That's actually water. Water will work perfectly as a shield. Uh, you can put a spaceship into water, of course, but you could put an astronaut in suspended animation into a bathtub, pretty much. So this could be water and is liquid, so this will also tell us it's not sub-zero inside here, so we're not talking about cryonics again, um, and may work as a shielding material for, for the safety of the astronaut. Matt Damon wakes up. Um, and that's, that's the problem. That's the problem with every science fiction movie that deals with hibernation. So waking up is very hard and it takes a long time and is a risky, risky business. If something goes wrong, it goes, down, it goes wrong during the arousal, not during the actually entering a suspended animation. Uh, so it can't be that fast. It can't be that you just pull them out of the water or whatever liquid it was in it. By the way, we see that he is, you know, liquid is coming out from his mouth, so maybe he was actually breathing this liquid. Maybe that could be uh, an oxygen carrier liquid or water, an oxygen carrier liquid, or maybe both in a kind of an onion structure, as we said before. Um, but it should take very long for a human to come up from this temperature. You imagine his body temperature should be near zero, not below zero, but near zero. and even to get to 37 will take uh, hours, if not days, and you have to warm up very, very, uh, uh, very slowly to avoid damage to, to tissue and reperfusion, and it should start breathing. So all of this, all of this is, I understand, it may be easier for the director 
not to wait hours or days, but yeah, that, that's not clearly not what's going to happen. And he's immediately conscious and aroused and awake, and, and so that's, that's not good. Uh, if, I, if I have to give a, a, a rank this movie, I would say the, the capsule and the water, that's very good, and the, the entire structure, very good. Um, the arousal is wrong, but the arousal is wrong almost in every movie, so I would discount it. I give it a nine to, to Interstellar. And we are coming to Captain America. So the eyes problem is at the moment difficult to solve. There is only one experiment that showed uh, on a, let's say a decent amount of tissue it was a kidney and a kidney could uh, be a rabbit kidney, could be um, sent in cryostasis and then re-implanted, so re-transplanted and be functional. But that one single case took a lot of trials and um, so the efficiency of the, pro of the procedure is very, very low. You, it's not reliable, you cannot really risk it now with, with the conscious uh, to be okay. Uh, but there may be, there may be changes in the future and there may be way in which cryonics can, can you know, do a step forward. There, there are many problems. I mentioned the ice crystal, the second one is um, the salts inside the water of the body will will stay in the water that is not freeze. Some part of the water will be frozen and the other part will be still water and then you get an electrolytic imbalance and that's very serious for the cell. So there, there is all sorts of problem for that. Um, so cryonics, I would say at the moment, is a bit out of reach. And we're coming to the next movie, Passengers. What I like about Passenger is this. Um, there is a, like an artificial intelligence that is taking care of the life status of this body. So it's, uh, it's doing diagnostic, it's monitoring how the body is doing, uh, if it's still healthy, vital parameters. It can do procedures. It was just injecting something. And he is extraordinarily well oriented to to someone who just wake up. So the, the other thing about the arousal is that um, after you arouse from hibernation, the one thing, the first thing you want to do is to sleep. The sleep is a very powerful sleep drive because we don't know why that happened, but it's, it, could, it, was, it was suggested, it has not been proven, it's still been discussed if you want to, that the amount of time you spend in suspended animation does count as sleep deprivation. So you don't actually sleep when you're that cold and your brain is kind of uh, stopped somehow. Uh, but whatever sleep is doing, it, it needs to do it when we're warm. So when you warm up, you sleep, your brain will realize, hey, it's a long time, I haven't slept yet. And so the first thing will, you know, will make you very sleepy and you may be a bit confused at the beginning. So um, it's very oriented right away. Uh, there are also more problems that the brain has during hibernation um, loses synaptic contact, so neurons don't make contact anymore. The, the number of synapses drop about 50%, so it's a huge drop. 
And, and that make total sense. Uh, the synapses are the part of the brain that uses more energy than any, anywhere else. And I would say probably it's the structure in itself that uses more energy than any other structure in the body. You don't use those synapses when you're in suspended animation, so it makes sense you're going to kind of cut them down and, and reduce the number, but then you have to make it back again, otherwise it would be kind of a, <laughs> a brain doo-doo. And so you want to um, have time for those synapses to you know, reconnect to neuron to uh, reconstruct synaptic buttons and synaptic contacts. And, and that will take hours. Even if it's a fast process, we do, it's extremely fast for biological standard, still hours or even maybe a day or two to go back to full normal. How to judge a uh, passenger in terms of, in term of uh, ranking? Um, I like the, the AI, the medical AI, the fact that the capsule is actually taking care of his guest and can do stuff. Um, his monitoring was kind of you know, interesting, uh, but the transparent, the see-through capsule, I, I don't like, and this part are, are more probably for the for the cinematographic part of the movie than the real science. So I give him a, an eight, but less than, less than uh, interested. Um, so if we go to Prometheus, uh, so the vapor comes out and that could be possible, could be, uh, we say not very likely at the moment, but there was a time of, uh, 10 years ago when there was a gas that was doing something similar. Was, uh, this gas was hydrogen sulfide. Was shown to, it was shown to work very well in mice. Uh, and was promising to, to you know, change the, the way, uh, open actually, the way to suspended animation in a very, very reliable and pliable way. It just didn't work on other animal model. That was a kind of a poor choice of animal model and that happens sometimes, of course, in science. Um, so it cannot, it couldn't be replicated in larger animals and therefore we're not using it at the moment. Uh, but there could be a different other gas, and if you can have even a, a molecule, a drug that could send in suspended animation, and, and you can make this drug a vapor or a gas, and you can breathe it, that make a lot of things easier. As you've seen in the previous movie, we don't see how those bodies are inducing suspended animation, because that's a little harder, I mean, we don't know how. But there could be a different way, anyway, you could imagine a drug being delivered to you and that the drug will send you there. Uh, so in this case, you keep, in this case, you keep, keep breathing the gas and are maintained in suspended animation. Try to relax, Dr. Schultz. So here the arousal. Here the arousal is, uh, I like it a little better. Uh, not, uh, well, we don't know how, how long did the pass. So it, it may actually happen that this arousal has taken a longer time. It doesn't seem to be instantaneous. Um, and it's hard, it's hard. They are actually having nausea, vomiting. Uh, of course, they are cold, they must have shivering. Um, I'm not sure about nausea. I'm sure your gastrointestinal tract will be, have been inactive for a long time. So the one thing I can imagine is that you're definitely not angry um, at the moment. You're not hungry for anything. Uh, it may take a little while before you want to feed again uh, or get used to feed again and to eat again. Uh, but it could well wield uh, maybe you have some nausea, maybe because your pressure may be very low at the moment and the heart is you know, a hard time coming back to full activity, 100% functional, so you may get experience at that point, maybe some nausea. Is it also interesting on the other side, and nausea is one mechanism that induces hypothermia in humans, uh, yeah, actually in every animal, uh, so we don't know the, the central mechanism and how this has happened, but this could be one way to open maybe a, a new research line or a pathway to induce uh, suspended animation. This part, I think, is so far the one was done better compared to the other. Um, the gas technique could be reasonable, uh, still don't like the transparent capsule. Um, it seems even a little bit less accurate than passenger. Let's say this one is 7.5. And we have a classic here, which is uh, Star Wars. <laughs> what, what's going on? Turn round. Chewbacca, I can't see.
worth protecting. If you survive the freezing process, that is. Well, Calrissian, did you survive? Yes, he's alive. And in perfect hibernation. He's all yours. All right, so, so far we, what we've learned from the movie is alive and is in perfect hibernation. Uh, it looks definitely weird. Um, first thing that doesn't really look like ice, look maybe some, some different, maybe it's not uh, liquid ice made from water, maybe the other different uh, solution. Um, and it really looked like you were spray with a very cool uh, solution and you can just stuck there. That will kill you almost instantly. Instant, uh, so there is no way this can be possible. Um, your tissue will form ice, uh, your cell will break, and you get tissue damage. And even more than this, which is already very real, um, is the hardest part to believe is the one, if now I remember, is coming. So he's cooking now, he's going to a microwave and that will destroy all his tissues. And, um, but magically, I would say this is more magic than, than science fiction, uh, he gets back to life. Um, this is absolutely, absolutely unrealistic and uh, of course there were different times so uh, there may have been an idea about this and maybe this look like a cool solution at least he's a bit disoriented after suddenly waking up um, and uh, maybe it's low in getting back to be himself but still still very 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 fast and give him a two right just for the two at least for the for the courage to show something like this all right i, I like to uh, say hi to everybody and uh, take care and have a good luck for and stay safe for the near future. Maybe we'll see you in a different spaceship on a different trip on a different planet. Bye bye.